Okay, now let's check this out. Let's see if I can go through this process and we can confirm or reject or see what we're going to do with this, okay? Um, since I've already drawn it up on the board, let's give our all stations to center a little bit of a workout here, okay? So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to say, well, so this is what we're going to um, test. Well, if sine x equals root 3 on 2, you can do one of two things at this point, okay? You can hopefully start to recognize root 3 on 2. That's going to be one of your exact values. And you can say, aha, I know what the first solution will be. For sure, it's going to be 60 degrees, okay? Alternatively, you can reach for your calculator. You can go sine inverse over root 3 on 2, and it will also hand you back 60 degrees, okay? So there's our first solution. Then you need to ask the question, well, what will the other one be? or others, right? Sometimes there can be more than another one. So I'm going to take this angle, and I'm going to recognize that sine is positive. See that? I mean, there's a plus sign. It's just hiding there, because we don't need to write it, OK? So good morning. Being that sine is positive, which of these four quadrants am I in? I've already got the first one. 60 degrees is a first quadrant angle. Which other quadrant is sine positive? It's the second quadrant, right? All stations to central really stands for all functions, sine, tan, and cos. So I'm in the second one, right? In the second one? In the second quadrant, what I do with this angle is I go 180 degrees, take away that. Now, six, sorry, 240 is going to give me a third quadrant angle, okay? So it is an answer. It's just unfortunately not going to give me the answer that I want. In fact, and you can reach for your calculator now to double check this. If you were to put in sine 240, I can guarantee you what you'll get is not root 3 and 2, but negative root 3 on 2. Okay? It's going to be the same size, but it'll be negative instead of positive. Okay? So very, very close. Good effort. But how I know that it's going to be take away rather than plus is I want an angle in this range. I want an angle in the second quadrant so that sine will be positive. Okay? So therefore, this is actually going to be 120 degrees. My 180 is 60. Okay? And don't feel bad if you got 240 as well. This is the whole reason why we're going through these, so that we can confirm we know what to do. All right. Um, now, just really quickly before I leave off this, how would I do this graphically without drawing such and such a quadrant? I would look at this. I'd say, OK, let's draw out a really, really rough sine x curve. There's a rough sine x curve. OK? x equals 60 degrees. I'm going to get that angle the same way that I got the angle in the first place, so with my calculator or remembering my exact values. And then I'll say, OK, root 3 on 2 is going to be somewhere around uh, here. OK, so the two answers I'm expecting are here and here, right? So I'm going to say there's the 60 degrees that my calculator or my memory first told me. And then this second angle will be 180 take away that 60, which is what gives me 120 as well. OK, so there's my rough sketch. That's all I would need to get to those two angles, 60, 120. All right, great. Let's have another go. Number two, who's got an answer for number two? Someone else? If cos x, yeah. All right. Um, 2, 10, and 3, 30. OK, we're going to try out x equals 2, 10, or 3, 30. Let's test this out. OK, so I see cos is negative, right? Good morning. Cos is negative. So when I have a look in these quadrants, right? This one's out because it's positive. This one's out because it's positive. I want a second and a third quadrant angle. That's the pair of angles I'm looking for. Okay. So how am I going to find out the size of that angle? First, I need to find out what that basic, that small acute angle is. So I'm going to go x equals cos inverse of root 3 on 2. And you see, that's how I ignore the sign to find out just that basic small angle. Okay. And that should be 30 degrees. Do we agree? Is that okay? That's what it's getting. And again, that's another exact value, right? So what do I do with this 30? I say in the second, sorry, yeah, in the second quadrant, right, where cos is negative, I'm gonna go 180 take away that angle. Right? So I'm gonna go 180 take away 30. And then in the third quadrant, I'm gonna go 180 plus, right? 180 plus. Okay, so that's going to give me, again, I've got one answer in common, right, but I've missed one, which is fine. This guy over here, this guy is 150, and this one is the one that we got before, 210. Okay, now what would happen if I put in 330? Because that is like one of these related angles, right? Well, you can see what I'll get, because I'm in the fourth quadrant, will not be minus 332, but 
positive root 3 on 2. And you can again check it out, just chuck cos 330 in your um, calculator. This is one of the great things about this kind of trig, that you never need to be in doubt. Like, it's alright if you make a mistake, you're like, hmm, I'll just check. I have this wonderful tool that can just tell me, confirm for me whether I got it right or not. Okay, and you will see, oh, it's close, but not quite. So therefore, I'll put in my second quadrant angle there. Again, just to quickly rehearse, how would I do that with a graph? Okay, let me draw, help if I open my wiper marker. Let me draw a really rough version of cos x, okay, because that's the kind of function I'm looking at. Here's cos. Okay, now, where are the answers I'm expecting? I want it to be negative root 3 on 2. So negative root 3 on 2 is going to be down here. Okay, so where are these two answers I'm getting? Here they are, here and here. Right? So the calculator is going to tell me, right, to go to this angle here is 30 degrees from the middle. You see how I'm using the symmetry to my advantage. So I go 30 degrees that way, which gives me 150. And then I go 30 degrees this way, which gives me 210. Bam, right there. Okay? Right, let's go through these last few a bit quicker. This time I will um, I'll skip the graph because again, it does take a bit longer if you're less familiar. And um, this will give you the right results so long as you know what's going on. Right? So I've got tan x equals negative one. Right? What will be my basic angle, my small angle? It's gonna be 45, right? And I get that by saying tan inverse of one, just by itself, without the sign. You remember that? And that hands you, um, that hands you 45. So what do I do with my 45 degrees? I say tan is supposed to be negative. Which quadrants am I interested in? Um, quadrant two? And four. Quadrant four, right. You can see here, they're all positive, that's out. Here, tan is positive, that's out as well. So I'm left with two and four, okay? So in quadrant two, x is going to be 100, take away that 45 degrees. Okay? And in quadrant four, I'm gonna be 360, take away the 45 degrees that you told me. Right, so that's going to give me mm, 135, or what's this one? 315. Fantastic. 315, bam. And again, you can check your calculator. 10, 135, it gives us negative 1, as expected. And 10, 315, same result. Okay. So, by the way, you can also remember, 10 is periodic every 180 degrees. He copies himself every 180 degrees. So if you wanted to, it wouldn't be that hard to guess what the next solution would be. The next solution after this guy, from here to here you add 180, from here to the next one, you add 180 and get 495 degrees, 495. Let's just quickly test it, because we have a calculator, why not? If you do 10 of 495, lo and behold, you get your negative one, okay? 